Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to walk you through how you can design a reliable and valid questionnaire and how you can put it online super fast and how this can align with your theoretical or conceptual framework. So this is the conceptual framework, you need to have the variables in your framework like self-esteem, self-efficacy and academic performance. And here we have H1, H2, H3, H4. These are the research hypotheses and mostly these are the alternative research hypotheses, meaning that self-esteem has a positive influence on academic performance. Self-esteem has a positive influence on self-efficacy. Self-efficacy in turn has a positive influence on academic performance. And self-esteem influences academic performance with the mediation effect of self-efficacy. When we talk about a mediator like this, it means that this, this is the explanation why this effect is happening. So a mediator uh, variable is explaining uh, why an effect is happening. So the reasons or the causes behind that influence. Moderator can explain the strength and direction of the influence as well. And the interaction with the IV. So this is in brief of model four for the uh, conceptual framework or mediation model. The next step is to operationalize each of these variables in terms of Likert scale questions that are adopted from valid and reliable uh, previous studies. So, so as to design a questionnaire. So here is a questionnaire structure. First, instructions and consent form, demographics, like gender, age, etc. Construct one, construct two, construct three, and thank you note. So here is the structure. So the first construct is self-esteem measured on a five point Likert scale and it has 10 items. Then the second one is self-efficacy scale and the construct number three is the academic performance scale. And finally, we have a thank you note. And here are some uh, websites that you can use to get reliable and valid uh, uh, questionnaires or scales. Like uh, here you could use, for example, PDF Feller or Google Scholar, simply Google. And here are the online survey forms that you can use to administer your questionnaire online, like Google Forms, Microsoft Forms, Qualtrics, SurveyMonkey, among others. So these are the free ones. And here are the data analysis tools that you can use to analyze the data once you get it from the questionnaire, like SPSS, AMS, PSPP, Excel, JASP, Jmovie, RStudio, Minitype, eView, Stata, and same models like Smart PLS and M+. So these are the free ones like PSPP, JASP, Jamovi, and RStudio, in addition to Python and SQL and other advanced tools. So now we move to the practice. So here we have the effect of self-esteem on academic performance of EFA learners, the mediation effect of self-efficacy. So this is the topic we are interested in. This is the research model conceptual framework. We have self-esteem, independent variable, mediator self-efficacy, and academic performance as dependent variable or outcome variable. And here we have the hypotheses, the alternative hypothesis, mostly H1, H2, H3, and H4. And here we have the operationalization, and this is what is important. So here we take the uh, Likert scale items, like coded from zero to three, in case of Rosenberg self-esteem scale, and we put them like this and uh, here what the codes refer to, like strongly agree, three agree, two disagree, one, and strongly disagree, zero, and negatively worded items would be uh, the reverse. Uh, so they would be scored in the reverse uh, scoring method. Uh, there is a way to do that, but later, and here you need, this is the total scores that uh, one can get on this uh, scale. And depending on the score, we can interpret whether they have low self-esteem, moderate self-esteem, or high self-esteem. So depending on the scores, usually these are like some established thresholds in the literature. For the general academic self-efficacy scale, it has been adapted from these uh, authors, and these are the Likert scale items. And this is the code book that is used to code the, these uh, anchors here from one to five. And academic performance, again, we have eight items, and here are the questions, and it is taken, of course, from these uh, study by these authors and these are these are the codes and here we have reference list So once we have a model like this with the conceptual framework with the title with the research hypothesis with the operationalization 
we need to put that on 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 google forms like this so here we have the google forms google, uh, the effects of self-esteem on academic uh, performance here we put like an introduction to tell respondents that their identity will remain confidential and the survey will take them just to three minutes or two minutes no personal data will be collected like personal names or any identification information and that there will be no right or wrong answer so you encourage them to uh, answer as honestly as possible and a thank you note usually sometimes you can get an irb like an institute review board before getting this uh so there are like depends on some universities like british or american universities they usually require an irb uh, board uh, acceptance letter before you can actually administer the questionnaire but other universities they don't require that uh, so here we have gender, we have male, female, in case we want to do comparison between male and female using independent samples t-test or man with new test and the age in years so that we can run regression in case we want to run regression or correlations etc. Uh, so that's why we have these variables but this is not the objective of the study so it could be used for another study. So here we have the self-esteem and here we have the items that correspond to self-esteem and here are the anchors from one to five or some from one to four it depends so here we need to to, to code it this way so for rosenberg self-esteem scale it can be coded from one to five like this uh, or zero to four so it depends self-efficacy again here are the items and then the performance here are the items again and thank you now so once you start getting the responses, you will have them like this. So most of the respondents are females, age in years, most of them are 24 years old. And here are the uh, answers. Uh, so these are like the open-ended questions as well. So before that, we can just click responder published and then copy responder link and we can shorten it and we can copy it. Or we can add the, um, a collaborator by adding an admin to this. We're just going to manage. Once you uh, start collecting the data, you will get the responses like this. So here you could go to this section of the responses and link to uh, a spreadsheet, like a Google spreadsheet. And you can download the results here and you can clean the data like removing what the respondent said, like in case you wrote some text here, etc. So this is data, data cleaning. Then go to file and simply download this, Microsoft Office Excel. And then once it is downloaded, I could just access it. And then, so once you download it, you can just click enable editing so that you can start uh, uh, editing it on Excel. So you could see here the age we need to clean these uh, so this is what is called data cleaning, etc. Then for the uh, statements, since they are from five, from one to five, I can simply uh, control H and then uh, find, for example, strongly agree, code it as five, replace all, and agree. I will code it as four, and then uh, match case, etc. Replace all. Then I have disagree. Uh, which is or before that we have neutral which is three and then I will replace everything after that we have uh, disagree coded as four and replace all then we have uh, strongly disagree so I will simply copy it from here because it needs to be the same but disagree should not be coded as four. It should be coded as as two. So if I did, uh, if I make any mistakes, I can go back and I will just code it like this, All right, like this, and then strongly disagree is going to be coded as one. Replace all. So now I have finished coding this uh, this survey. First, I can simply remove this. It's not relevant to me. I can do the same for gender, male, and female. For, for the timestamp, I will just remove it as well. For gender, I could simply uh, replace female with one and, uh, and male with two for data coding. So male with two and then replace all. And that's it. So here, once we have the data coded, uh, for here, for to what extent, you could just re remove these. 
like this or I replace with nothing so I will replace this with nothing and replace all see if it works but just don't match case so that's it so this is for the Rosenberg self-esteem scale then we have the second one so once we have a code book we need to see the code book first and see so first we have self-esteem from 1 to 10 then self-efficacy SE uh, etc so to what extent do you agree with these the following items can be also replaced anyway so we can just keep everything like this now we can export this data to JASP or Jamovi so if we have Jamovi, Jamovi is an open source program so it is free we can simply go to these three, uh, three dots or hamburger menu and we go to special import or import and then we can go to browse go to downloads where we put this and we just import the data and once it is imported it will show up something like this simply i can delete the variables that are not needed so here are the uh these are the liquid scale items coded so i can run exploratory factor analysis i can run confirmatory factor analysis i can re run regression i can do variable computation after checking the reliability etc so basically what i need to do is that i need to go to factor analysis do reliability analysis and here i need to check the rosenberg self-esteem items but i assume they have already been tested in terms of the reliability the chrome box alpha reliability should be 0.7 and if it is not 0.7 here like in this case we need to reverse score some items etc so after we reverse score of score the items we can simply compute the composite score and uh, continue the analysis if i want to do factor analysis i can run different types of factor analysis principal component analysis exploratory factor analysis and confirmatory factor analysis for exploratory factor analysis you simply to take the factors uh, like you, you put all the items together like this it, it drag and drop them here and the uh this is their loadings the, the that here the, the factors are lot like the items are loaded into three factors which correspond to our three constructs and you can see how they are loaded here of course there are like some negative loadings these are uh, belonging to the uh, uh, the negatively worded items so we need to do some data transformation and data reverse coding before running the analysis so after doing the factor analysis uh, exploratory one we can go and do the uh, confirmatory one here are all the items that we can check uh, so here it's very customizable we can run confirmatory factor analysis like factor one self-esteem factor two uh, let's say uh, self-efficacy and factor three is academic performance and that's it for factor analysis then we can run regression analysis especially correlation and regression and i can also run mediation analysis for mediation you cannot find this feature here mid mode so you can simply go to this box and you go to manage installed and go to uh, library and you type uh, mid uh, mode this one and you can install it so i already have it installed thanks to uh, ravi selker and then i can install jam advanced mediation models this this is a suit for estimating mediation and models including multiple mediators and conditional mediators so here i can install it as well so once i install these uh, functionalities i can simply come here and here i could put for example let's say age is the mediator variable gender is the predictor and i feel that i am person of worth is the dependent variable the simple model you could see here that these are the p-values the p-value should be 0 0.05 and below for it to be qualified as statistically significant uh, if not it is not statistically significant like in this case so here uh, age is not mediating is not mediator statistically significant mediator variable in this model I can add path estimates you can see like gender and age it has uh, no so there is no statistically significant uh, influence whatsoever and this is the estimate that indicates the uh, coefficient level to what extent the influence is positive or to what extent it is negative is it weak moderate or high or etc so we can add confidence intervals especially for medical studies to, to just investigate the risk factors etc 
So these are like how we can run mediation and moderation. So for moderation, so this is like for moderation as well mediation and we have moderation because the difference for moderation and mediation is that mediation is uh, like a mediator is a variable that explains the relationship whereas a moderator is interacting with the IV or the predictor variable. Let's say here gender predicts I feel that I'm good with the mediation or moderator of age. And here are the values. Here they are not statistically significant, at least for the sample of students that we investigated. Maybe if we have a large sample with different segmentation, we could see significant differences here. But now here there are no statistically significant differences for the mediation, media, moderation, mediation, and also regression because mediation is a set of regression tests. Like if we run a linear regression, we can see like uh, the covariates, like let's say, uh, this is the dependent variable, so I could just place it here. And this is the uh, predictor variable, and here is the p-value, and this is the, the, the coefficient, which is 3% positive influence. If I want to run ANOVA test, or if I want to run a uh, t-test, so I, I can go to ANOVA here, and I can run ANOVA in case I want to compare three groups. If I want to run independent sample t-test, let's say of gender with regard to all of these items so i will select everything here and put them here and we will see if there is any statistically significant differences in these variables so here you could just highlight the p-values that are less than 0 0.05 it seems there is no statistically significant difference in terms of gender and these uh liquid scale items of different scales so here we are doing item by item analysis of course this is not the only way there are other ways to do it so I'm just showing you for the sake of uh, time. I didn't want to take much time here. That's why I'm just running these uh, simple statistics. So thank you so much. In case you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below or contact me via one of my social media and see you soon. Bye for now.